To begin with, I just want to make sure you're getting weird exponents. Question A is 81 to the negative 1 half. If that freaks you out, just start with 81 to the 1 half. And then think about what negative exponents do. So do it in two parts. Do the 1 half, then do the negative. All right, part B. What is 9 to the negative 1? That will remind you what a negative exponent does. Part C. This one looks complicated, but if you just make one little you know, like substitution at a time. It's not that bad. 4 to the 0, you should know what that is, over 4, and all of that to the 1 half. Why are these exponents coming up all the time? Because we're doing something called exponentials. So, of course, exponents are important. This last one's a little equation. And it's b to the negative 1 equals 8. You should know how to fix that. Like, what do you do to both sides to solve it? All right, you've got a partner sitting right next to you. Try to confer and decide what you think a, b, c, and d are. I'll pause and give that a shot. Okay. Riker. If I had just put it to the one-half power, what would the answer have been? Nine, because that means square root. Why isn't the answer just nine then, Nate? So therefore, it's negative nine? No, it's one. One over nine is correct. How many groups had that one right? No, it's not that many groups. All right, if you didn't know what to do, I hope you learned from that. All right, this next one is just what does a negative power do? And it flips it, so it's one-ninth again. All right, on to part C. That part's one. Remember, it's not zero. It's one. And then it's really one-fourth, and then you got to know what to the one-half power means, which means square root. But on this problem, you also have to know that means separate square roots are fine. And then what is the separate square root of one? One. And the square root of four is two, so the answer is one-half. A lot of people will leave that as the square root of one-fourth and not realize you can do them as separate square roots. That's going to come up. It already has on your last test. but All right. And then this one. To solve this, I'm going to put it to the power of negative 1. Why? It already had a negative 1. Because a negative 1 times a negative 1 makes a positive 1. And b to the positive 1 is b. That's why I put it to the negative 1. So what is 8 to the negative 1? It's 1 eighth. All right. Okay. Now, that's a good start just with, like, little tricky exponent things that are going to come up on your next test. And here is a typical easy. Is this one growth or decay? It's decay. Which part tells you that, the 2 or the 1 third? The 1 third. This one's decay. All right. And then... If I had to graph it, you'd make an XY chart. Would you just save, I'm going to save some time and ask you to put in a negative one, which should actually be really easy, and zero and one, and find me three points. Tully, when you put in negative one, what happened to the one-third? Um, Negative one power does what again? Flips it. So it just becomes three. And then three times two is six. Negative one comma six. All right. Jack, when I put in zero, what happens? Uh, the one-third becomes one. Yep. Isn't the whole answer just one then? No. This part's one. So final answer? Two. two is correct. Addy, this last one. I'm putting in a one right here. So tell me what to do. It's one third. It's one third. Then times it by two. Two times one third. Two thirds. There you go. Now, 
If I had to tell you where the asymptote was, I don't even need to graph it. Because I know the asymptote for all of these things is zero unless it got moved. You know what I mean? The asymptote for all of these things, whether it had been growth like this or decay like that, the asymptote is at zero unless it moved. What would make it move? If I had like added something on the outside, then it would have had to move, but I didn't. And so it didn't move. And so the asymptote is on the x-axis, so it's y equals zero. That's where the asymptote is. Now, I'm not saying it's both of these graphs. I'm saying I don't care which graph it is. My asymptote's gonna be at zero. All right. Now, I'm gonna give you one to do that's more complicated. Please ask the kid next to you if you get stuck in the process here. And it's got a negative power. Oh, I'm remembering that these are hard to read in green, so I'm gonna rewrite it. Okay, and what I want is the graph. So I'm gonna ask you to put in the same three points, negative one, zero, and positive one. Get three points, and this time, just graph this thing. Your answers aren't as scary as you might think. Sure, there's a fraction or two, but they're kind of easy fractions. Okay. Claudia, can you tell me what happens when I put in a negative one? That becomes a one. Stays it was one fourth, you're right. You multiply one half times one fourth. And you get? You get one, eighth. one eighth is correct. Now if you're like, I don't know how to graph that, well just get close. Negative one comma one eighth means it only goes up a tiny bit. So it's pretty much touching the x-axis. Okay. Nate, would you put in zero for me and tell me what happens? That becomes one, and you times by a half, and you got a half. Zero comma a half. Now you do have to know that a half is higher than an eighth, so it's higher than that other point was. Greta, would you please put in the one and tell me what happens when you put in a one? It becomes four. And then you do one half of four, you get two. Over one, up two. Now, does that look like exponential growth or decay? It looks like growth to me. So it is growth, and the asymptote is always at zero unless it moved, and it didn't move, and so it's there. So it's at x-axis is y equals zero. That's the horizontal asymptote. But wait a minute. I thought if there was a fraction here that they should always be decay. What messed that up is there was a negative in the exponent, which flips that over. Do you get how that's actually not a one-fourth when there's a negative there? It's exactly the same as if it had been one-half for your starting value, and then the one-half-fourth flips to four over one to the regular x. And if you wanted to do the problem that way, you would have gotten the same exact points. Your points would have been the same when you stuck in the same numbers. So if you ever see one with the negative power like this, you can make it like this and flip over the base. All right. And now, if I give you two points like this, 0, 2, and 1, 3, You're supposed to be able to tell me how to write the equation for it. Everybody start with this. Y equals A times B to the X. Now, if I knew A, which is the starting value, I could just write it in. And I do know the starting value because I can look at the graph. What is it? Two. See, it started at two. So I know that's a two. Now the B is not gonna be that easy. I can't just look at it and go, oh, I know B. But I can put in an X and a Y, which is here, and I can solve. Please do that 
and tell me the equation that it results when you're done. It's like two, one half to the x or something like that. Give me the equation, you just don't know b yet. Solve by putting in your point. I'm gonna pause for a second, let you try that. All right, your x was one because of this, and your y was three. Three equals two times b to the one. Ah, just divide by two. B is three over two. Okay. B, just goes right here, is three over two. Get how I did that? I took my other point, I stuck them into the equation here and here for the X and the Y, and I solved. Okay, so if you understood that, this is really critical. Oh wait, one more thing, limits. The limit of the function as X approaches, for this left end right here, on this part, could you please write the limit? It's on your next test. Write the limit notation. You've been tested on it before, but it's been a while. I reminded you yesterday how limits work. If you weren't here yesterday, you may want to really look at this close. All right, when it's going this way, I'm gonna continue the red line, it's going like this way. X is this, and it's X is going this way, which is to negative infinity. And as I continue my red line down, it's just getting closer and closer to zero. Raise your hand if you had negative infinity and zero. Cool, all right. Now, uh, the last, like I wanna make sure you get how to do this. I'm gonna give you one more point. Would you agree this looks like Exponential decay. If I gave you these two points on a test, 0, 3, would you know the start value then? Cool. And then I hope you know what to do with this point, negative 1, 4, to be able to write me the equation like a times b to the x, and you should already know a, and then you should be able to figure out b. I'll pause for a second We you try to complete that. And this is our last problem. And then if you finish it super quick and you just want to get going on the homework, it's going to be the odds. Just do the odd problems. One, three, five, seven, nine. It's literally five questions. Allie, can you tell me what the start value was? Three. So I'm putting a three there. Now the harder thing, Hallie. These points have to go in. What do I do? Four goes in for Y. And then negative one for the X. And then what do I do? Divide both sides by three. And then you have 4 thirds equals b to the negative 1. And we practiced this earlier. How do you solve for b and get it completely alone? Nope, not square root. You put it to the power that makes b turn into just b to the 1, which is negative 1. Because negative 1 times negative 1 makes 1. Then I got to do it to this side. And now I got b alone. Riker, final answer. It's three over four. 
this is your B. Okay. The negative one power makes it flip over. So, B equals three fourths. So is that the answer answer? No, the answer answer is we gotta do A, B to the X. And I know A and I know B, so then I write the equation. Y equals, and I know A, that was the starting value, and it's three. B, B is three fourths. And then you put it to the X, and that's an equation. Equations have an X and a Y in them. All right. So that is a good review of everything up to here. That's a lot of stuff. That covers like half, probably more. That's probably three-fourths of your next test. And I know it might have been a little stressful because it's, you know, it's a lot of stuff to remember in there. But if you practice it tonight, then you're going to be up to date. If you decide to blow this off, then you're blowing off three-fourths of the test. You really want to do this. It's only, I'm only giving you like five questions. Just the odd problems on that worksheet. You have a partner sitting right next to you who's got the same assignment. Why don't you just work together until the end of the hour? Yes? Uh, what about the worksheet that you handed out yesterday that you handed out? Yes, that worksheet that I handed out yesterday, I'm going to give one more day because I forgot to put a due date on it in Skyward, and I could see some kid burning me with, oh, well, you didn't say it was due tomorrow. So I'm making that worksheet due tomorrow. Okay, so if you haven't already done the worksheet that I handed out yesterday, I'll happily hand one to you guys that were gone. Uh, that worksheet is due tomorrow. Come on up here, three that were gone. I'll show you which ones to skip. I am skip three. And I had everybody skip 16 and 18. And these will feel fairly easy if you paid attention at the end of the hour right there. There you go. There you go. There, you go. Yep. Um, there is a key also, guys, so definitely doable. Yes. I can, I'm, just, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. You want to hand it in early, don't you? Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, I do have a place I can store that. Um, there you go. And which hour are you in again? Oh, hour one? It's on? Hour one. Yeah. Going to go have fun somewhere, I hope? I'm going to a stand soon. Ah, fun. Get some cheese on the way. Thank you.